All right, y'all. Today is Green Thumb Thursday. It's where we give you the tips and tricks you need to help your gardens flourish. It's a new segment here at News 19. We're so excited about. Now, as the temperatures continue to warm up this morning, we're breaking down how you can best care for your plants during hot weather. We'll also take a look at how to protect your plants against invasive bugs and other wildlife. Join us now is Andy Cave, Director of Horticulture at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Thank you for coming there early this morning, Andy. Good morning, everyone. Good Glad morning. And so we're getting to that time when we start to garden. What are some basic tips can you give us right now just maybe to prepare a little bit? Well, you know, <clears throat> It's starting to get warm again, mm -hmm. uh, so we need to be concerned about that and start to think about our watering. Uh, didn't have to think about that a ton over the winter time, but you know, especially you know, we had what 92 or 93 a couple of days ago, which is a little unusual for this time of year. Uh, so just pay attention if you have if you have a sprinkler system, haven't turned it back on yet. Now's the time to turn it on. Now's the time to check it and make sure it's working properly before we get into the really hot weather. Mm. Um, so that's important. Uh, this is also a great time to kind of clean up your garden beds if you haven't done it for the winter time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I brought a little bag of mulch. Mulch, it, yeah, you can, Get my hands you can look there. and smell. and So that's hardwood mulch, and that's a great way Ooh. to help suppress weeds, mm -hmm. help make the plants stand out better, Yeah, uh, keeps roots cool in the summer, warm in the winter. Um, so mulch is just a really great thing uh, for your garden yeah. beds. Absolutely. I honestly got nervous when you said smell the mulch because not all mulch <laughs> smells the same. It, it could have been real, you know, a little oh, stinky it, sometimes, it but it smells it good. Been, uh, that smells pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and, and one important thing to know, you know, mentioning about critters and things getting in the garden. Oh, yeah. You know, mulch, mulch, as beneficial as it can be, uh, it can be detrimental at times if you don't apply it correctly. Mm -hmm. So it's important not to have big mounds up right you know, next to your house, don't pile it up right next to the house. Uh, bugs and things like to get down in here. Uh, you want a you know, couple of inch layer of mulch, you know, you don't want it this tall. Uh, just basic things like that. Anytime you, you plant new plants, yeah. spread fresh mulch, that just makes critters want to go dig. Mm. I don't know how many times <laughs> we planted bulbs in the garden, planted you know, hundreds of bulbs, and the next morning you get up and the squirrels have dug them all up. Oh man. You know, you've got to compete with nature a little bit. Um, I always say, you know, plant a little extra to, mm -hmm. you know, to provide a little more for the ones, that, you know, for the plants that are going to get eaten. Um, you know, but also, you know, it's important when you plant stuff, there's some things you can do. You can grate up scented soap. People mm. say oh, that, know uh, that. that like human hair, cut up human hair spread over there yeah. deters things. But the problem with things like that or any deterrent you buy over the counter, you know, at a garden center, mm -hmm. uh, box store, is typically you have to reapply it after every time it rains. Um, oh. So, you know, choosing the, the right plants. If you've got a big deer problem, you may want to choose deer resistant plants. So it's going to take a little bit of research, but with a little bit of work, um, you can kind of grow a garden for yourself and for wildlife. Oh, I love that giving back to wildlife. Now, here is something that I need to know. How do we keep our soil, our mulch moist? Because you know that South Carolina heat's going to dry it right up. Well, well, watering is very important and the way you water is more important. I like to encourage people to water more infrequently, but for longer durations. Uh, so if you might say, well, I'm going to water this for 20 minutes a day, six days a week. Maybe it's better to water for 45 minutes or an mm -hmm. hour. Let that water percolate down in the soil. And that's encouraging the roots of the plants to grow deeper. And when you get in drought periods, the deeper the roots are, that means they're grabbing water from deeper in the soil. Ooh, that's a good way to put it. Okay, so infrequently, but for longer periods of time. Now, do different plants require different levels of watering? Or yeah, can you just... yeah, I mean, they're different. Yeah, they're plants that like to grow in wet conditions. Mm -hmm. They're plants that like to grow in super dry conditions. Now, there are a lot of plants that can uh, acclimate to varying conditions, uh, but it, it's generally good to look on you know, a plant label when you mm -hmm. buy it. If it says sun or shade, that's a good uh, indication of where it needs to go in your garden. Yep. Uh, a plant that's in too much sun is just going to burn, turn yellow, brown, mm. yuck. 
We don't want any of that. All right, well, thank you so much, Andy, for schooling us on soil, sun, all of those things. And my friends, again, Green Thumb Thursday is something we'll bring to you again. But for more gardening tips and other plant and flower advice, be sure to join the Gandy's Gardeners Facebook page, y'all. This page is popping, okay? You can also share pictures of what you're growing, which you might see on a future newscast right here on News 19.